fine. Wonderbar. Definitely like having my computer to take notes. I'm going to start doing that even once we can be face to face. Yeah, good idea. It's a lot quicker to do the minutes later on. There's one that some of the guys use where I work. It's called uh, OneNote, I think. Microsoft OneNote or Note Drive. Or oh, something yeah, like that. yeah. That's a pretty cool one for taking notes. It's really easy to move around and stuff. All right. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah. Yes. 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 Yay. Yes. Okay, the the really expensive fancy AirPods aren't working for me. <laughs> as well. Got to charge them up. Do you remember? Do you remember that? <laughs> I could hear you guys fine the second time. Oh. But I don't know why you couldn't hear me. Whenever you guys are ready, you guys can start. All right. I think I am just missing what crystal. This conference will now be recorded. Uh, yeah, I think Crystal is just joining right now. Oh, there she is. Okay. And who's um caller two? I do I not see. know. Oh my it might gosh. be me, Melissa, because I have to listen on my phone, but I log in oh, okay. on the computer. Yeah, nope, that looks fine. Like just, just wanted to make sure I knew who it was. Kevin, is that your accountant? <laughs> <laughs> He works for Snuggles. It's the best kind. <laughs> oh, too cute. Okay, Crystal, can you hear us yet? Yes, I can. Can Excellent. you hear me? Yep. Okay. All right. Well, then I think if we're good to go, we'll go ahead and start. Uh, good evening. Today is the April 14th, 2020 um, meeting of the East Bridgewater Finance Committee. We'll be, again, obviously doing this meeting via a go-to meeting until we can be together again. <laughs> we'll call it at 6.02. Okay, all right. So what we hope to accomplish tonight, um, we're hoping this won't actually be too long of a meeting again. Um, I think we just have a few random things to kind of go through, make sure everyone's on the same page, and then we'll spend the rest of this week getting the documents, final documents together. And then I think what we'd like to do is kind of run through all of the votes for next week. Um, so again, we'd be running through uh, the final budget, would be voting the capital budget and all the remaining articles um, that we haven't voted on. So that's the intent is to kind of cross our T's, dot our I's tonight, um, and then have that prepped and ready to go for next week. So we don't have to, you know, drag all the discussion. Um, there were a few uh, changes, happy changes, I think we'll call them, <laughs> that happened this past week. Um, we, as we mentioned last week, we had some questions remaining um, that we wanted to still have with the DPW um, and some, as we dug a little bit deeper into the spreadsheet, we found a discrepancy or two. So Brian um, sat down with uh, the DPW director and the town accountant and went through uh, the two enterprise accounts. And there were a, uh, there were a couple discrepancies in those two accounts. Um, fortunately, the discrepancy was worked in our favor. So we wound up um, actually coming out with some additional dollars uh, in the right direction, which was good. So Brian, do you want to kind of expunge on that a little bit? Sure. Um, because of a glitch in the the spreadsheet, we were not um, we were not actually importing the correct revenue number for the water enterprise fund, which we corrected, and that <clears throat> also was affecting the operating budget. But it's an enterprise fund, so it shouldn't have been calculated in at all. So once I corrected that and pulled that out. Um, we were able to um, correct the spreadsheet and we create and I shouldn't say we created, but we found that there was a, a mistake um, in the way that they were accounting for the enterprise fund as well, which is something I worked with John to straighten out in the town accountant. A little misunderstanding about how an enterprise fund is supposed to function. <clears throat> so we got that taken care of. And with the glitch in the software, taken care of, 
we created about another hundred thousand dollars that we uh, could reassign in the budget, and uh, we have done so. And I have double checked this with uh, Phyllis. I had her dissect to make sure that we're not making any other mistake, um, and had her check every line in the spreadsheet. So I'm very comfortable that we have finally have an accurate number. And um, I did put the money into back into the snow budget that we had really wanted to put there and then put the rest of the money into the finance committee reserve account. I, I did that deliberately as opposed to restoring anything in my lines, because I think it's fine if we leave these things in the finance committee reserve. And when I need the money or identify the project, assuming that our budget going forward is the real, it's gonna be our real working budget. Uh, I can always come to, to the finance committee, explain it, justify it, and get the transfer when I need it. So good news in a sense. Um, so what I thought we should do is just one final run through. So Brian, do you want to give me um, screen control? Yes. Uh, let me see. Laura, let's see. Make presenter. Yes. You have screen control. Perfect. Okay, so let's just run through again very quickly the adjustments that we've gone back and forth a few times on and just make sure everybody's 100% on them before we prepare the final documents for us to vote on um, next week. So um, no changes were made to the initial changes we made to the DPW. We still had the $40,000 in adjustments. Um, to the straight DPW, we're kind of excluding enterprise funds from that line item. No changes made this week uh, in the fire department adjustments we had done, the health insurance adjustments. Um, reserve, we did adjust accordingly. So reserve now will be uh, 225 um, for the finance committee reserve fund. No change to that small incremental increase for rec, uh, rec commission. Uh, same similarly for the reduction in historic um, snow and ice, we did increase. So I'll go over that one in one second. Um, no changes to the police department adjustments. Um, we did last week make some slight adjustments again that Brian mentioned to the selectmen. We'll go over in a minute. Um, and we had no, no additional adjustments to the townwide insurance line. Um, we still had the $4,000 adjustment that we had um, pending for the water enterprise fund. And similarly, no changes to the Southeastern increase that we had about a, two weeks ago. Um, so real quick, I'll just kind of show you, get to minimize here. Oops, I'm minimizing the wrong thing. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, all right, I'm gonna have to wing it. All right, so again, as Brian mentioned, he remo removed the two line items, uh, the special projects and the intern line items. Um, we did for just rounding purposes to have a slight increase of change that we added to um, training and expense and computers really more to just help us with kind of zeroing out the budget deficit. Um, and as I mentioned, we did bump up the reserve fund back to where we put more than when we had started. So we're at the 225 for the reserve fund. And We'll kind of come back to that conversation in a few minutes. Um, and then I just want to scroll down really quickly to show you. Um, hold on, I want to just get to snow and ice real quick. It's right next. So snow and ice. Next, here it is. Um, so snow and ice, we've now been able to bring back up to where we initially started, which was hoping to get to the $200,000 mark. Um, still not going to cover us, but is a much, uh, much more comfortable place to be um, for that line item. So any questions, comments on any of those adjustments thus far? Okay, I'll just bring the summary one back up. So everybody is um, ultimately comfortable with all the adjustments that we've made? Yes. Okay, great. All right. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna call it. <laughs> we're gonna call the code um, and call this final final. 
and we'll go ahead. I'm gonna. Is that me? Um, what we'll do is we'll. I'm gonna keep this document for our tracking purposes to make sure that we know. But we'll go ahead and prepare the final spreadsheets and the final documents um, that'll just have these numbers in them, and we won't show them as adjustments. Um, but we'll maintain this document with our notes on it um, for our historic purposes. Um, but then we'll go ahead and we'll have um, all the final documents prepared uh, for us to vote on next week. Um, and as soon as we get those, I can get a copy out to you guys um, so you can take a look. But if there's no additional questions on that. Nothing? Excellent. Good. All right. Well, moving on then. Um, this actually shouldn't be too long of a conversation as well. Um, is Bri um, Brian sent out and I sent to you guys the updated warrant. So we'd like to next week um, go through the remaining. I'm just kind of ticking and tying on the spreadsheet that Melanie um, that Melanie started of what we voted on, what we still need to vote on. There were just a couple slight changes this week. Um, since, well, I guess probably within the last two weeks, I guess, since I, I gave you the last one, um, we've had one article in the special get, get canceled or taken out and one new one added in. So um, out of the, there's six articles in the special, as you'll see, um, and we do need to re-vote on the first one, which is the union personnel contracts, which we discussed last week. Um, and then we have, um, one that went away, which I can't remember which what its name was. The fire truck. Fire truck. I have this beautiful little spreadsheet that Melanie, Melanie and I have been working on. Um, so yep, so we crossed out the uh, purchase of the tower truck because that's only going to be in the annual town meeting. Um, and the boiler project um, was a duplicate, was in the other as well. Um, but we do have a new one. Um, I'm calling it the Unused Balance of Enterprise Water Project. So, Brian, do you want to just update everybody on that one? Yeah, I don't think we discussed it last week. We didn't. And in going through the enterprise funds, we found that there had been appropriated funds that we had bonded to do projects where the water uh, department and there's money left over in those articles. So, legally, we can transfer those to a new article and use them for like purposes. So we identified that there was um, $125,610 in these unused articles. <clears throat> so we're sweeping them into a new article so that we can reappropriate them for water improvements, uh, water uh, infrastructure improvements, repairs and replacements. This does not affect the the, um, the operating funds. This is out of the enterprise funds. These monies have already been allocated, so they can be spent on these projects without any impact to the retained earnings, the water rate, everything. So all good. <clears throat> but they were just sitting there in articles that have long since expired in terms of need. So we roll them back up and put them back into an article which means we don't have to bond another project up to 125,000. So just a question on that, what would be like the top project at the top of the list for the water department that they would go we ahead need to, to We need to replace some fire hydrants in town. That's a big one. We have a problem up on the uh, central street um, on the other side of, of Bedford that we've got a, a problem with a water main that we need to fix. Um, we're hoping it's a small repair, but it will be paid for out of this one. But it can also, this article could sit there for as long as we decide it should for projects that are smaller in scope. For example, as you know, <clears throat> there's a project down below for a million dollars. Um, obviously, um, we can't cover that project with 125, but Great. we can do some smaller projects. Great. Thank you. Brian, Any other? The, oh, go ahead, Dan. What's, what's the theory behind uh, taking the fire tower truck out of the special town meeting if it was going to cost us less? Because we're not going to have the special town meeting in time to purchase it. 
Okay. Originally, the town meeting would have been May 11th. Mm -hmm. We don't believe that we'll be able to do that on May 11th. And therefore, the opportunity to purchase the truck will not necessarily still be there. So we took it out of the, since the date we're looking at in June is so close to the beginning of the fiscal year, there's no, there's no need to make a special appropriation in the special. Gotcha. Um, so I wonder if we can bill that cost of extra fire truck to the COVID disaster. <laughs> that we lost out on it because? Because, yeah. We lost the discount, sure. Um, and then one other article in the special, um, Joe, actually your question uh, that you had last week or the week before actually sparked um, a mm -hmm. question that Melanie reached out to the school uh, schools on, on the homeless transportation um, expense. We're leaving it as is for the moment, um, but there is a very, very good chance that that number is gonna go down. Um, and depending on whether or not we go back to school this year or not, could potentially even go away from an overage. So um, remains to be seen at this moment. But, you know, and Brian, I don't know if, what your thoughts are, but, you know, when we as a committee make our vote, we could still vote it through and then it could still go away or it could be lower and we would be fine. It could also be one of those things that you simply say, we'll give our report at town meeting. Mm -hmm. So that will and cover. The number is going to be in flux right up to the, my opinion, the last minute, because one of the problems is the Department of, of Secondary Education has said, you cannot pay for products and services you did not receive. Therefore, since you're not doing homeless transportation, therefore you cannot pay for it. But there's a contractor involved that's obviously predicated their capital expenses and their payments, et cetera, on that revenue. So this is being appealed to the Department of Revenue. <clears throat> and so there'll probably be some kind of a settlement in the future to, you know, cover some of their uh, overhead costs in in because they didn't run the transportation they don't get the full value but they'll get some but how much that is and all that kind of stuff we don't know yet so it's hard to establish what that value is going to be so any questions on the remaining on the special articles i think we covered most of them um and then on the annual my spreadsheet because we did drop one I think um we dropped oh actually we didn't drop it we moved I'm just ticking and tying through the sheet now we moved we're merging one article into another um the compensation for elected boards and officials we agreed to move into that's why my sheet's off one um but I don't think there's been any other changes to the annual articles, correct, Brian? That's correct. There was one other change in the dollar amount to article one in the special. Did you want to go back? Oh, up to yeah, that? no, I had, I'm sorry. I had that in my notes. Um, okay. I think we talked about that last week that we had increased it from the 150 to the 200. We discussed that last week. Yes. So, and if you notice in the spreadsheet that I gave you, it's now at 212 because we identified that some of the vacation time we'll need to buy back is in the uh, water fund. So the water fund revenue is 33,404. And then the, <clears throat> the regular non-enterprise fund is 178,596. Okay, so we'll still include it all in the same article though, and just revote yes. it. So we have it that we have to revote it anyway. So um, yes. once we have that final number in the document, we'll just put it back in, it's in is yellow, so we'll revote it. Yep. And then, like I said, I don't think there were any other changes to the annual articles other than the housekeeping of just merging. I think we've got the rest all in there. Um, there's several that we did vote, um, but there's still several others that we still need to just waiting, either passing it for the sake of passing it or waiting for a final number, um, specifically around the enterprise funds. Uh, I knew a couple of those popped up. Um, so I think once we, finalize so I think Brian and I talked today and we think as long as we're feeling comfortable that we're in this final stages we'll happy with capital um our budget's going you know we're happy where we are with our budget that Brian will prepare what we think is the closest to the final uh, draft of the articles 
hopefully soon and then get that out to you. Um, maybe you were thinking, Brian, maybe even in hard copy or? I would like to do it in hard copy because I would really like everybody to work as a proofreader. I don't want any mistakes. So, you know, we we look at everything and, and uh, <clears throat> I could use some help just making sure that it reads correctly. I didn't drop anything um that the numbers tie out and they will but uh, you know more eyes the better yeah so i'm thinking if we might be able to even get that done you know within the next maybe couple of days even and get it out to everybody everybody has a real chance to do a thorough read through um and then we'll have it organized uh for next tuesday assuming we're going to be able to meet, have it organized that we can kind of really just run through the, the articles that we have to do, you know, we'll run through the budget and then we'll run through the rest of the articles um, that we need to vote on. And then for the moment, <laughs> that's a short moment or a long moment, will be an, an okay place. Um, the next, art, uh, next agenda item I have, you know, kind of highlights that, you know, whether or not we're good to go. So we'll, based on the information we have today we will have a balanced budget and we will have a warrant voted um, with all the articles voted and recommended by the finance committee now now we need to talk about the what ifs and the current you know the state of the state mm -hmm. um and i think again we had a little bit of conversation about it last week we're not going to know until we know but again um you know talking about the contingencies and, and Brian's already kind of had a lot of those thoughts and discussions with us. Um, but one of the things I wanted Brian to kind of inform the group about today is our, co you know, what are we doing? You know, what kind of expenses are we having with the COVID-19 spending? But also more importantly, having a discussion about the announcements that came out about um, municipal aid and, and Brian's got some good news on grants too. Uh, so yes. go ahead, Brian. I informed Laura today that we got a CARES grant, which is part of the stimulus package um, for $18,900, call it 19,000 for easy math um, that came, which is good. Um, that's to um, help us cover some of our medical expenses that we've incurred. Um, it can be added directly to the ambulance fund or it can be segregated as grant money. At the moment, I've segregated his grant money to see where we need to apply. In addition, we do believe that we'll get a, some money and relative to the degree about how much I don't know from some of the spending that we've done on COVID, the N95 masks, the personal protective equipment that we've done, the aeroclave that you transferred money from originally. We'll get some of those funds um, rebated at some point in the future because of the state of emergency that was declared and the state willingness to contribute to the towns for some of these expenses is extraordinary. How much and when, I don't know. We have already covered all of the expenses within the existing budget and with existing funds. So we haven't deficit, we have not deficit spend it. We are allowed to deficit spend for COVID and make it up over the next three years right at the moment we haven't. We've been able to cover all of the spending that we've done uh, within the current budget. You may see when we get to the end of the budget year, some extraordinary transfers as a result of it, but we should be able to cover it. Um, <clears throat> the other concern comes down to, Laura, if you want to jump to state of the state now, um, uh, is that all right? Yep, you that's where we're in. Okay, can you bring up the spending on the article, the spending sheet, the article request sheet? So one of the concerns I have is if they if they drop uh, state aid, where will we come out? The first thing to remember is that our estimates of state revenue and the cherry sheet estimates, we level funded everything except the aid to education. Prior to COVID, you will recall that the big press was on to increase the Chapter 70 money as aid to education. And so we estimated that number at the lowest estimate provided by the state. They passed that bill, that appropriation has, has been declared. 
Whether they'll go back and rescind that appropriation, I don't know. But at the moment, we level funded all other forms of state aid. We level funded local receipts. So we were conservative in forecasting revenue. If we do get a cut in local aid, I don't know how much that cut would be and how we would finance it. I want to show you some of the articles that I would tell you that we may pass at the annual town meeting, but we're going to hold back from either ordering the product involved or appropriating the money so that it's available should we have to go back and recast the operating budget using some of the capital budget money. So the things that would definitely be held back at the bottom of the spreadsheet, there is a transfer to stabilization for 537,085. Uh, My recommendation is one of two things. We would simply not make that transfer to stabilization and allow it to flow back as available free cash. So it would be certified as part of next year's free cash number. It would make our free cash greater. That certification would happen in September, October. So if we needed to recast the budget, that money would be available. And any free cash coming out of the FY20 budget. If you scroll up, we could hold back the $400,000 on, on electrical improvements for town facilities. That's 400,000. We could hold back on the road repairs article, which is 500,000. Um, we could hold back on providing the fund for healthcare mitigation. Um, <clears throat> that could be back in play. Um, we could go after some of the capital spending for the schools, but obviously they would need the Chromebooks for the start of school. So I'm, I'm not sure that I would go after that right away. Uh, I could hold back on the police cruisers at 115,000. Now I'm not saying hold back forever because we're gonna need to replace those, but I might hold back for six months uh, and just stall with what we've got for, for that purpose. Uh, we, the, we would hold back the central school sewer connection at 100,000. <clears throat> so this would, this would create an awfully large sum of money that would be available for reappropriation. And I don't think that, uh, I don't know, I don't have a good crystal ball in this, but I don't believe that if you added all these up, that our cuts for local aid would be anywhere near these. But these are the articles that, that while maybe approved at town meeting, we would just hold back the spending authorization. And then we, I think we need to go about six months into the fiscal year and then see where we're at. <clears throat> Um, I, you know, the police cruisers, um, I, six months is about as far as I want to go because one of the cruisers is in pretty bad shape and I don't want the repair bills, nor do I want to take it off the, um, I don't want to take it out of service. And then the last part of it is it takes about six to seven months to get a police cruiser. So even if I delay six months, I'm really delaying longer. So I want to be very careful about that one. Um, and I think the, the there's another thing that's going to schools are going to have some surplus this year, and I've encouraged them to come talk to the finance committee when that's uh, available, um, because I they have some ideas of what they'd like to use it for. But I think it's very important that they have um, a conversation with the finance committee so that it just doesn't that the that money that's saved from the bus contracts doesn't just disappear into the budget that we know that we either participate in the discussion about where the money goes or that we know where the money goes and not just that it never comes back. So um, I think if we have a situation, let's say that there's a million dollar cut to the operating budget, I'm going to take it out of the, the uh, capital budget. We don't really have the room if, let's say if the cut was $2 million, where would I take a million dollars out of the operating budget? I don't have that without laying off people. Or in some cases, some towns have discussed going to the unions and giving them a zero year. I'm not ready to do that yet. One, because you can only play that card once. 
And if this problem is a multi-year problem, let's say we go into a recession that's as long as the 2008 recession or the one that was in 1993 that goes on for multiple fiscal years, I need to be able to go back and play that card if things go worse. So I'm not interested in going to the unions and declaring a zero. And more especially right now, what's my evidence that we need a zero? So I would go here first and make cuts here. And then we still are husbanding our stabilization money. We haven't touched the stabilization with this plan. So if we had to, we could take a, a dive into stabilization in the future. Um, I'd rather not. It took a long time to build those stabilization numbers, and that would be one of the last resorts I would employ. Um, but if you're not going to spend your reserves, your rainy day fund in the event of a pandemic, when would you? So, you know, we need to. One of the problems I always get into is I we we spend a lot of money bringing employees on. I don't want to shed employees needlessly or without a great deal of thought. Did I forget anything we spoke about this afternoon, Laura? I was much better this afternoon. <laughs> um, no, there were a couple other line items. I was just thinking like the OPEB line item was was a potential we talked yep. about. Um, yeah, you can so I like that yeah. one because that's definitely one we would we would hold back. Yeah, I mean, I think the bottom line is, is that, you know, having some kind of a, a plan B queued up and ready to have discussions about it's when I think it's more of a when, um, when the news comes down. Um, and I think the other part of uh, what Brian and I talked about, and you can't end it with the schools, but I think as a finance committee, I think, you know, we'd probably want to have a discussion with all of, of um, the larger departments. So the school kind of just as an obvious because of you know size size and uh the fact that the schools are closed down um and you know things like the busing contract and the before and after care program um so many other effects of you know the lunch program they're, they're doing you know you know i know it's an in and out usually but you know what are the effects of what we're dealing with um, on these budgets, on these departments. School absolutely is going to have a lot of back and forth, but maybe the other departments are having some of this too, and we should be thinking about it. You know, Brian mentioned, um, you know, ironically, we thought ambulance rides were up initially, and now they're falling back down a little. So now ambulance uh, revenues are going to be down. What are the other impacts that potentially this uh, pandemic, pandemic is having on other departments? I mean, I have to imagine you know, even though it's a small department, the Department of Health, I have a feeling that this is probably impacting their little department greatly. <laughs> um, and they're probably doing yeoman's work. And what else could potentially be going They've on? They've received $12,000 from the state to sub supplement their payroll budget. We've had overtime there. Yeah. Uh, and we've had to put more hours into the town nurse. But um, there, there has been $12,000 received from the state to offset those costs. So it's possible we'll be slightly deficited in that line, but nothing that I don't think we can handle without an with an internal transfer. I think it's going to be easy. Good. Uh, I think as we get a little further along, I think it probably would be a good idea for us to maybe you know meet with the school, have some discussions, um, and again, not looking to you know nickel and dime everybody to get to have a very very good understanding of kind of the effects that this has had on the budgets. Um, you know, and what, let's have some discussion about it and whether or not that's happened with the DPW police and fire as well. Um, police right now is under control. DPW's budget's coming in right now because we haven't cut anything. So mm -hmm. we're still functioning. Um, yeah. And in fact, we're getting some projects done, which is good. And by the way, just to go off the record, go off the, the agenda a little bit, last night's storm was ten thousand dollars worth of damage to the roof at town hall oh hmm. so we've got a insurance um meeting on wednesday morning just have the adjuster in and and we have a twenty five hundred dollar deductible um and so if the roof is ten thousand we have a twenty five dollar exposure but i have that money in insurance to cover that i won't need a transfer at this time 
Okay. Any questions from the committee on any of this discussion? I just had one question about the COVID. Did, would they, as the Board of Health talked about, maybe doing testing in town, setting up a test, you know, station or something when that starts to come around? Um, we don't have the expertise to do that, nor okay. right now are, are there kits available. And I'd like to see what they come out with testing, whether you had it and didn't know it. So do you have the antibodies for the COVID? That's gonna be the second round of testing. And according to, you know, uh, it, am I pronouncing it right, Dr. Fossey? Um, everybody's gonna have to get tested. So we'll probably right. we're probably involved in we'll be involved in that I suspect when that okay. comes along. Right, and then question on the million dollar fire truck. So could we finance that if we were to save money? Um, we can finance it, but I'd rather borrow it from myself. At two, at what three percent? And I guess no, the other question, no. I wouldn't charge myself any interest. Uh, but I mean, the interest rates are low. I guess that would be my point. And then, yeah. like, what's the status of the fire truck now? Is it not operable? The one they're replacing? Mm -hmm. No, it's just costing us a fortune in um, <coughs> maintenance. Um, the best way to describe it is the uh, ladder doesn't stay up. So I'm not there's, sure. There's, there's tons of issues um, other than the ladder. There's tons of issues with the vehicle, Joe. Um, the chief's gone through. Um, he's probably talked to the committee for the last three years, I think at least every year he's like, oh, I think I can get by this year. I think I can get by in this year. He's like, you know, it's not financially feasible to get by with this truck anymore. It's costing way more um, than we can, than we can basically afford. Um, right. If you, if you, if you watch his presentation, he goes into great detail um, about exactly what's wrong with the truck. But I can is. run the, the expense numbers on the repairs this, just this year. Oh, he, he gave us that number. Yeah. yeah. But he spent more money, oh, so yeah, you know because we he didn't think we were going to get the truck in time, and I don't think we are. So he spent some more money just recently on the on the truck. So let's I'll get I'll get that account for you and send it around. Thanks. Any other questions on? I know it's a lot. I know it's a lot of speculative uh, conversation. Um, but I think it's it's good conversation for us to be having at this point, knowing that um, it's coming around the corner. Direct answer to questions. We can't deal with what we don't know. We can only deal with what we do know and be prepared as best we can for whatever the state. But I have to be honest with you, I, the, <clears throat> the stimulus money from the federal government was directed to any city or town with a population of a half a million or more and for the rest of us, go talk to your state. So we are talking to our state about what the aid package is likely to look at. And mostly myself and fellow town administrators are advocating for aid would be great, but no cut in our local aid would be better. So um, we'll see what we're, what we're going to do. We're not getting really much out of DOR now because they just don't know it either. So. Okay. All That's right. Good. Excellent. Moving on then, our last item of business um, for today is to vote on the meeting minutes of March 31st. Um, Melanie, we sent these out last week, but they were pretty substantial. So we thought we'd give everybody another week to kind of read through them. So hopefully everybody has, and I don't believe Melanie received any edits. Move to accept the minutes of 331 as presented. I'll second. second. Uh, motion from Kevin, a second. I think that was Crystal. Any additional discussion? No. Okay. Um, I'll do, I'll just, it's one minute. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. And let's see you. Thank you. All right. Um, I actually forgot to put next meeting. So we'll plan on um, doing another meeting next Tuesday, uh, same time if this works for everyone. Um, oh, actually, I just realized Dave never dialed in. Okay. I know he was having electricity issues. Um, 
So hopefully we'll catch up with him. But um, is next Tuesday at six o'clock still workable for everybody? Yes. Relatively? Okay, perfect. Then we'll go ahead and schedule that. Um, we'll get um, materials out to you well in advance for you to make sure you review. Um, and so then the night of, we'll just go through similar to how we did the meeting on the 31st um, with less discussion about each article, but basically go through them and then we'll do a roll call vote and kind of whip through them pretty quick. So we'll go ahead and get that posted and out. Other than that, any other questions, comments from any of the committee members? I think so. I think Brian, you're doing a good job under this crisis. This is a once in a lifetime deal. So I think you're doing really good with you and the people in the town. I would, I, <coughs> I've been rather pleased with the cooperation we're getting from all departments in all areas. And uh, I can't ask for greater support from the Board of Selectmen than I've gotten over this. Good. Yeah, good. Everyone coming together. Yep. All right. All right. Well, on, on that, I will uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. A second. Any discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent. All right. We'll call the meeting at 641. Great. Having a good night, everyone, and stay safe. Bye.